Many months ago, I published a video based on Stable Diffusion Web UI, A1111, introducing QR Code Monster and demonstrating how to create an interesting QR code using it. Recently, a friend came across this old video and told me that a company once spent 20,000 renminbi to customize a QR code. He thinks this technology has great potential and asked if I could create a tutorial on Comfy UI. No problem. Let's get started. I'll not only explain various parameters and key details of making QR codes, but also provide the entire workflow for free. First, let me show you the finished products of this workflow. These are different characters generated with default parameters using QR Monster. Do you find them appealing? You can try scanning one to visit my homepage. By changing styles and incorporating Laura, we can add flowers, toys. IV also selected some Laura of famous IPs from Blizzard, such as Tracer and DVA from Overwatch, Tyrant from World of Warcraft, and a scannable Hearthstone card back. Without further ado, let's begin. In the previous video, we mainly utilized QR Monster and the Brightness Control Net models. They don't require special preprocessors, you just need to download the models. Let's check out their release pages. First, find QR Monster. As the author mentioned, this model is designed to create interesting and scannable QR codes. Look at the download count of the previous month, it had over 120,000 downloads, proving its popularity. The author also shared some usage details, like choosing a lower error correction level for small QR codes and the opposite for larger ones. QR codes can be paired with a gray background to enhance creativity. Choosing suitable keywords is crucial, I can attest to that. Higher weights make scanning easier, but they also leave more visible traces on the QR code, so finding a balance is important during image creation. Now, let's go to the download page. Although the author mentioned in an issue that V2 is superior in various aspects compared to V1, in practice, I found that they each have their uses in different scenarios, so I downloaded both versions. The current directory is for V1. Let's download the 1.45 GB diffusion underscore PyTorch underscore model file, which the author says is more compatible with Comfy UI. Then, go to the V2 directory, where there are three files, directly download the V2 version, also 1.45 GB in size. I renamed them differently and placed them in Comfy UI backslash models backslash control net directory. Next, visit the brightness models release page. The introduction is quite brief, the model's function is color control for images. The related usage information is mostly empty, filled with, more information needed. Let's download directly, there's only one file here. Remember to rename it and place it in the comfy UI backslash models backslash control net directory as well. In this video, I'll demonstrate two different ways to create creative QR codes, one where the QR code is the main focus, meaning characters will appear within the QR code, called Code Pack People, and another where we expand upon the QR code, making it just a part of the overall design, called People Pack Code. However, the preparation for both processes is the same, create a suitable QR code. If you're satisfied with your QR code and don't want to make changes, you can skip directly to setting up the workflow. A QR code is essentially a data storage using black and white patterns, the algorithm is straightforward. For instance, Comfy UI has a custom node that can directly convert a URL into a QR code. But for more options, it's best to use a suitable website or tool, like this one. Simply input your URL into the text box, and you'll get your QR code on the right. Longer URLs make the QR code look more complex. Generally, simpler QR codes are better for AI to work with. I searched online and found a free short link service provider which gave me a shorter URL. It works fine. I hope it remains stable. If you scan this QR code while watching the video and it doesn't take you to my homepage, then it might be acting up. Now, let's adjust its shape. The error correction level determines the QR code's readability. Higher values make it more readable, but also more complex. I prepared a smaller QR code, so selected M. The shape inside the QR code can be set to auto or specified based on personal preference. Rotation angle can be adjusted for a less conventional look. I prefer a 180 degree rotation. I usually choose the heart-shaped pixel for smoother lines. 
markers refer to the three large squares. The outer frame can be square, rounded, or pointy. Inside shapes also offer various options. I typically choose these two combinations for added interest. The sub markers option is for this. Choose one that looks good to you. The border size determines the distance from the QR code to the image edge. Higher values increase image size, but decrease QR code proportion. Usually, two works fine. The parameters below have minimal impact. I usually don T adjust them. The seed only affects the outline of the three positioning points. Most other parameters don't need tweaking, except for color. Selecting invert gives a black and white reversed QR code. These two positions are for color selection. For better recognition, black and white are generally recommended. Once everything is set, click download to save it locally. All set, time to get to work. Entering the comfy UI interface, Load the image. Upload the previously created QR code. Add control net. And connect the image ports of the two nodes. Then, add the control net model. Start with the V1 version. As mentioned earlier. With the weight set to 1.3. Start the intervention at 0 0.05 and end at 0 0.9. Copy and paste these two nodes. For the second control net, choose the brightness model. Set the weight to 0 0.4. Start at 0 and end at 0 0.4. Its control is stronger, so exiting earlier is fine. Connect these two control net nodes. And also connect the brightness reference image directly to the QR code. Add a checkpoint node. Choosing a suitable checkpoint is crucial for generating QR codes. In the anime field, Prime Mix and Reimagination work well. This time, I'll choose Prime Mix. For better results, I'll also add a Load LoRa node. Choose Add Underscore Detail. And change the weight and clip to 0.7. Then, add a free U node, which is simpler with default parameters. Finally, connect model to K sampler. Next, connect the positive and negative prompt words from the control net output. Connect two prompt word nodes here at the input end. Connect the clip of the prompt word to the clip of Laura. Fill in the positive and negative prompt words. Just like choosing the checkpoint, positive prompt words are crucial for generating QR codes. In theory, it's best to define bright and dark colors separately in the prompt words, so the AI can avoid inconsistencies in brightness and darkness with the elements in the image. For example, lighter colors like yellow and pink need higher saturation and brightness values to be recognized as bright pixels. If you only allow AI to use these colors and disable purple, black, etc., the generated image will be harder to scan. Adjust the parameters in the sampler. For more details, it's best to use 50 steps, lower CFG to 6, and choose the DPMPP underscore 2M underscore SD Keras sampling method. Add the VAE decode and preview image nodes after the sampler. Then, add a load VAE node. Choosing the blessed model, which I find works better with Prime Mix than the commonly used 840000. Add an empty latent image node. And change both width and height to input. In my experience, for larger QR codes above 700, you can directly connect a get image size to the empty latent image to pass the image size. But for smaller QR codes with poor scannability, I'll directly define a slightly larger size. Double click on the blank screen to add an INT node. Set the value to 860, defining the width and height of the generated image. At this point, the overall workflow is set up. Click Run. 
generating 50 steps can take a bit of time, so I added some speed. And the image is ready. Scan it to see how quickly it's recognized. You can also scan it. Now let's add the expansion and repair processes. Double click on the screen and search for Ultimate SD Upscale. Connect the left port of the node to the corresponding nodes in the previous workflow. Add a load upscale model node. Choose the 4x UltraSharp model, and then adjust the parameters of the sampler and iteration steps. Then add a preview image node. For facial enhancement, I'll use the face detailer node directly, it's simpler and more convenient, and connect it to the previous workflow. Add an Ultralytics Detector Provider node. Connect it to the box. Choose the face underscore Yolov 8M model. And then add a SAM loader node. Selecting this model. Similarly, adjust the parameters here. And don't forget to create a new preview image node. I usually put these three image viewing nodes together for easy comparison. Click to generate, and I'll speed it up a bit. The results are all out, enlarge them for inspection. Let's scan them one by one to check. After all, if they can't be scanned, their appearance won't matter. These three are all fine. The previous process was based on the V1 version. Now, I'll switch to the V2 version of QR Monster, which has better recognition for QR codes. I can disable the brightness that was previously necessary. Click to generate. Speed up the process. And the original image comes out first, scannable. Compare this V2 version with the V1 version. The QR code traces in the V2 version are weaker, especially the borders look more natural. All right, the new expanded and facially repaired images are also ready. They look the same as before. Let S scan each one to confirm, and they re all good. Apart from the anime girls from earlier, if someone likes the floral effects I showed before, they just need to change the checkpoint and prompt words. Change VAE to the commonly used model. And since the colors of flowers and plants are not as distinct as black and white ribbons, increase the weight of QR Monster to 1.5. And other parameters remain unchanged. Click to generate, speed up the processing. When not including characters, we don't actually need facial repair. I forgot to remove it earlier, but it doesn't affect anything, so let it be. The results are all out. Scan them no issues with recognition. However, this theme works better on slightly more complex QR codes. Let's switch to a long URL QR code this time. Change the image. Click to generate directly. Speed up to the results. You can see the image is brighter and richer. And more importantly, scannable. After demonstrating the code pack people process, let S talk about the more creative people pack code. Open a drawing tool and adjust the size to your preference. I want to use the QR code as a skirt, so let's create a 2 to 3 aspect ratio image with dimensions 800 by 1200. Next, modify the canvas background color to gray with RGB values of 80, 80, 80. Then, place the QR code on this gray canvas and we can start processing. First, use a white brush to touch up the edges of the QR code. Since the borders of the generated QR code are quite prominent, painting over them with straight lines can significantly soften that boxed-in feeling. You can adjust these lines as per your vision, 
they can be thicker if needed. Besides white, I'll also add some black strokes, particularly at the top of the canvas. These black strokes can easily resemble long hair or hair accessories, making the image look more like a painting. I won't guide you through each stroke, but will show you a previously touched up image. Slightly sketchy, lol. Back in Comfy UI, switch to this edited QR code image. We don't need the sizing node this time. Directly pass the width and height of the image to the empty latent image node via Get Image Size. Switch the QR Monster model back to V1, because in my testing, I found that the V2 version lacks creativity in non-QR code areas. Set the weight to 1.3. For V1, we need to enable the two control net nodes related to brightness. Change back to the previous large model. Adjust the prompt words and VAE. Then click to generate. Speed up the process. And the results are out. Upon zooming in, you LL notice significant changes from before. The QR code now appears as part of a skirt. Scan it, and it is easily recognizable. However, I think this image isn't quite attractive, so let's run a few more and try our luck. I want to demonstrate the image generation this time, but following this workflow and parameters, almost every image should be scannable. I'll show you some selected images that I'm satisfied with. The structure is intact, clothing looks natural, and there's no distortion in the body. Using this workflow, we can also overlay open pose or IP adapter for more detailed compositions, like these two images, which turned out quite nicely. Feel free to experiment as you like. All right, did everyone learn? It's okay if not, because I'll share both workflows with you, and you can use them by clicking. Just remember to replace the QR code with your own. If you encounter any issues during usage, feel free to comment or message me directly. I'll try my best to answer. That wraps up today's video. See you next time.